Welcome to Osceola Heritage Park in Kissimmee, Florida, where today Toronto FC hits the road, hoping to notch their first victory in the 2023 MLS Next Pro season. Orlando City B. They're unbeaten at home this year. And they're hoping to keep it that way off to a great start in 2023 under head coach Martin Croman as we take a look at the Eastern Conference standings. Crown Legacy FC, the only unbeaten team in the East. There are two in the West, but OCB you see right there in second place, 11 points in five matches. They're coming off of a shootout victory last week against NYFC. Two. And in talking to Johnny Tamini last week, even though they didn't get a win in their last match, Toronto, he really liked their second half performance a week ago. Now let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. First for Orlando City, they'll play the 4-3-3 under head coach Martin Perlman. Javier Otero, another start in net. Led the league in saves last year. Acuna tied for the team lead in goals with Kibanguchi. Did not to brace in the shootout victory last week. Alexander Freeman, first teamer. Fabian Loyola as well. Abdi Salim, the third of the first teamers on this OCB. Starting 11 today, and now for Toronto FC2, Johnny Cimini, manager for Toronto. And last week they started two academy players. Today it'll be three, Stefanovic, Olguin, and Adamo Pantaleo, left back. Gavrin in goal, 31st overall pick in 2022. Just about ready for kick here in Orlando. OCB, three wins, one loss, and a penalty shootout victory. Toronto FC winless to this point. Our referee today, Natalie Simon. She's joined by Juan Pablo Casas, Diego Lucio, and Daniel Gutierrez is the fourth official. We're underway from Osceola Heritage Park. So glad you could be with us on this beautiful night. Orlando City B jumped out to a 2-0 advantage a week ago. Conceded one in stoppage time in the first half and then allowed the equalizer in the 82nd minute before winning in a penalty shootout, getting the extra point. Martin Perlman told me this week it felt like it was two different games, a first half and a second half. First half did a lot of what they wanted to, but the second half gave a lot of props their opponent, NYC FC2, and equalized. Juninho into the middle for Granados. He had his pass intercepted, and now here comes Toronto FC. Ogin towards the outside, chasing it down into the corner is Faria. John Cimini was very complimentary of Faria. Take it away in the corner, but Toronto has it right back before giving it away again. And it rolls over the touchline. It'll be a throw in coming for Orlando City B.
ball ahead and a chance for Toronto right off the jump. In on goal, and Toronto strikes first. Jesus Batiste got behind the back line of Orlando City B and buried it off the far post. And Toronto on the road in the third minute leads. Ladies and gentlemen, Toronto has two goals scored by number 73 in Jesus Batiste in the third minute. On the assist from the keeper, Gavrin, I mean, unbelievable how he was lost. And with the left foot, banked it off the post and in. Not the start that OCB wants at home. Toronto FC, after a really strong close in their match last week, picks up right where they left off. And they can now play with a road lead. I was just about to say how it was almost a, the opposite of what Martin Perlman thought of Orlando's performance last week. Johnny Cimini told me the first half was not what they wanted. They didn't prepare that way. Second half was more of what they would like to do. You know, he told his team at halftime, had to be straightforward, couldn't sugarcoat it. It should not have been that open and that they were playing like an academy team. He put it bluntly, they were playing like an academy team and not in the systems that he wants his team to go by. But in the second half, they were much more in control. There was balance in their buildup and their counterattack, and it was almost like it was two completely different teams. for OCB. You know Martin Perlman's not going to like to start here at home. Antonoglu with some space weaving through everybody and then finally he's dispossessed. I mean just lack of days to go defending from Orlando City B. And Antonoglu almost made him pay. 21-year-old, North York, Canada. Antonoglu had four goals last year. And Toronto is just all over Orlando at the moment. And that's a foul going the other way. Orlando, a very physical team, but sometimes they let it get the best of them. They lead MLS Next Pro in yellows so far. Into the sixth minute, a goal in the third minute by Jesus Batiz. Got behind the leaky defense for Orlando after a great ball from the keeper, Gavrin. Down the right side. Antonoglu got back, and a nice defensive play by him, but he had the last touch, so it'll be a throw-in for OCB. Loyola will do the honors. He gets it in to Juninho. Granados. Rabdi Salim, the first team. Orlando flips the field. Here they come. Tablante puts one on frame. And over to get it is Gavrin. Dives for it. And no harm done. Salim. Tablante gets it back. Tablante, his cross headed away. Nicely done by Matthew Maderos, the 20 year old, playing in his second game for Toronto. So 
first corner of the game coming for OCB. And with this baseball stadium set up, there's not much room there to load up for this corner. The in-swinger towards the front post, takes a deflection, and Toronto couldn't clear. Frosten again, and a whistle, and a foul. Juninho, the Brazilian, weaving through. Still with it. Got triple team that almost turned it over, but Orlando City B keeps it alive. Freeman, member of the U.S. National Youth Team, turned it over, and Toronto looks to counter. Oguin, who is very good in the last match, and John Cimini really told us He's never going to shy away from the ass to do, and he's made a lot of progress. Loves how aggressive his game is. Massive engine is how he was described. Siramancic to the far side now. Gets it back. Temi Antonoglu. Mancic to the far side. Courage had lost it, and so OCB will throw in. Gucci plays it to his keeper, Otero. Nino. Far side, and Orlando has some space to work with. Tablante. Nice defensive work. By Toronto. Solis battling on the sideline. Gets it back. Solis turns the corner. Puts on the brakes. Being watched by Courage. And a foul. Check that. That was Olguin. Johnny Cimini not happy with that. Whistle. PA announcement. The yellow was issued to the bench, and the coaching staff of Toronto FC2. And that one harmlessly into the hands of Luca Gavron. Another long ball. Again, same way they scored the first time, but it was defended much better by OCD, OCB. Matiz was battling for it again. He used the goal scorer back in the third minute. Things have settled down a bit since then, but OCB is certainly not happy to have conceded that in that way.
Toronto feels like they can ride this momentum and notch their first win. You know, it's kind of a, a, a tough balance because, you know, as we've talked to many coaches in this league, of course, you'd like to win, but the main objective is to develop the players and get them ready to play on the first team. Now, those things go hand in hand. You know, the better your development, the better they play the system, the more success you'll have at this level. But Toronto, after a pretty good season last year, they finished seventh in the Eastern Conference as OCB has a chance to equalize, but again, defended well by Toronto. You know, there's some things to build off of for Toronto FC2, especially in that second half from a week ago. They're off to a good start here today. But you know the way that Orlando City B has been able to put up scoring this year. You might need more than one to win this one. Leo went down in the corner. And now to the near side. Some space for Juninho. Race for it. And it's the keeper, Gabbard, who comes up with it. Batiz, the goal scorer. Middle, there's a big shirt pull there, and let that go. Bong was getting his jersey tugged on, and there was nothing there, apparently. Boguin. It's turned over in the midfield. That threw ball a little bit too far for everybody. Missed opportunity for OCB. Moises Tablante, the Venezuelan. CB on the move. Freeman just outside the 18. Juninho, the low cross, cleared away nicely by Toronto. Batiz takes a nasty spill, and there's a yellow issue. The first one on OCB today. Again, they came in leading MLS Next Pro in yellows. Take one more look. Yeah, Batiz went. <laughs> Did not look like a fun collision. Ladies and gentlemen, a yellow card has been issued to OCB number 59, Alejandro Granados. Granados picks up the yellow. Granados, only 16 years old. He turned 17 on May 30th, a month from today. Faria. Stays with Toronto. This portion of the match is brought to you by Orlando Health. Choose well. Set piece coming for Toronto FC2 to try and extend its lead. Goal came in the third minute. Jesus Batiz. Here it comes. Low and it's blocked by the wall and it results in a corner.
Line swing corner on its way. OCB deals with it nicely for now, and now they get the clear for the moment. Toronto right back on it. Towards the back post, out of the reach of everybody, the closest one there was Jesus Batiz. Now it's turned over. Medina gets it ahead. Dangerous slide tackle, but play moves on. Crowd doesn't like it. Faria lost it, and here comes OCB. Long ball too far ahead. Gavron comes and picks it up. Toronto on the early goal in the first three minutes by Jesus Batiz. Orlando City B is unbeaten at home this season. Three matches, they're 3 0 1. And this is coming off of a six win, 13 loss, five draw campaign in 2022. But much better to start this season. Already halfway to their total wins from last year. Batiz with some space again. Batiz, does he have another in him? Slides it into the middle and defended well by Toronto. Toronto. Juninho pressured by Simramancic. He's coming back from injury. Played only 30 minutes in last week's game and they're hoping to get the 18-year-old about 45 to an hour out there today. pretty easily there from Loyola. Faria on the far side. Plays a little give and go with Courage. Now Stefanovic, the 16-year-old academy player. 
Antonoglu back into the middle. That's Loyola there pressuring, but able to maneuver well through it. Oh, and a save! Javier Otero keeps this at 1-0. One more look at that one we can because that was a phenomenal save by Javier Otero. Batiz working against Freeman, and Batiz wins that battle. Batiz, the cross deflected away, and another corner for Toronto. Toronto has controlled this first 23 and a half minutes. Here it is again, Mbonga getting in. Defender went down, Otero aggressive, and he had to be or else it would have been 2-0. post over everybody. Long range and again Otero punches that one away but Toronto coming out strong in this first half another corner. Otero has been sharp and he's had to be. OCB with a lackluster performance so far in this first half. The in-swinging corner. It's a good one. But OCB handles it well. The momentary clear. It's sent right back in. Toronto keeping the pressure on, but OCB finally gets the long range clear. This portion of the match is brought to you by Exploria. Explore more and vacation better with Exploria Resorts. that foul, but it was. Or it's an opportunity that Batiz would have had. Solis is the one who went down. Juninho. That's a very physical play and another foul. This one on Courage. He's getting a stern talking to from Natalie Simon. Granados went down. Loyola gets it ahead. Juninho. Loyola. Solis. Double teamed in the corner, and he lost to Toronto. Does such a nice job handling that, and then they get a foul.
Set piece coming for Orlando. Towards the back post, headed away by Toronto. Still alive, though, at the moment for OCB. Trevino, left foot, high and wide. Toronto on the counter. Batiz, the goal scorer, 25 minutes ago. Trying to get around Freeman and does. Batiz trying to slide it through. Off of Freeman last is another corner. Freeman got beat but recovered well. A couple of times those two have been 1v1. And it's Batiz who's been able to get the step. That little hesitation. Freeman. Nice job to get in front of that, but it just trickled over the goal line and it'll be a corner. Here it comes. Dangerous. Kept in. That was a bad miss hit. The goal kick coming. This portion of the match is brought to you by Walt Disney World, the most magical place on Earth. Give and go in the overlap. OCB. Oh, great save. And the rebound is set high by Loyola. Fabian Loyola, the 17-year-old, had a golden chance to tie it, and he set it about 15 feet over the ball. Great first save there by Gavrin. And it came right to Loyola, and he just sent that one a mile high. Granado now, across to nobody, Granados got it away. Nino battling, almost turned it over, but he's right back on it.
Long ball handled well. Loyola, who just had the great chance to tie it. Fourth minute. Goal came in the third minute from Jesus Batiz. Freeman with some space. Alexander Freeman to the middle for Loyola. Nicely done by Toronto, but results in a corner for OCB. Orlando trying something different off this corner. Toronto handling it well, though. Towards the back post. Scramble. And away from danger is Toronto. Step for step, Batiz. There's a player down for Toronto. Looks like it's Adamo Pantaleo. You know what the new rules after a certain amount of time, it'll have to come off. Pantaleo is the one who's down, playing in his second game, the 18-year-old, an academy player. So now we're ready for play once again. Tanoglu will throw in. So no sub for Pantaleo. Oh, 
Hogan. Toronto's played a strong half. Hoping to go into the break. At least up the one goal. And another foul on OCB. Take one more look at what just happened. So again, it's a very physical OCB team. chance here for Toronto to potentially extend their advantage. So now we're ready. Faria standing over it. He takes it. And a big save again by Otero. He's come up with three already in his first half. It does result in a corner for Toronto FC 2. Man, this could be a lot worse than 1-0 to Toronto. Can't imagine Martin Perlman is very happy with the first half effort of his team. Great attempt here on goal, and Otero, did a fantastic job. And led the league in saves last year. And showing you why with a couple of highlight reel ones in this first half. Again, Toronto threatening. They let that go. Faria went down. Battle in the corner. And somehow, it's Orlando City B. Who's away with it. ball from the keeper Gavrin connecting with Batiz in the first five minutes of the match. That's been it so far. OCB has had a couple of chances but haven't been able to cash in yet and equalize. And of course as we mentioned Otero the only reason why this game is still 1-0. So a goal kick coming.
Time winding down in this first half. Toronto FC 2 hoping for its first win of the season. And now they have numbers. A little off target there by Mbong. Throw in for OCB. And we'll get a substitution as well. Ladies and gentlemen, substitution for OCB in the 44th minute. Leading the game is number 58, Juninho. He's replaced by number 96, Zachariah Taifi. So Juninho is out. Zakaria Taifi comes in. Taifi, an academy player. We're going to have two minutes of stoppage time. First, a corner. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth official has indicated that there will be a minimum of two minutes of added time. Early announcement, two minutes of added time. Batiz with the goal in the third minute. Here's the corner from OCB. Toronto's been very good defensively in this first half. And they hang on and take this lead into halftime. Nicely done to golf his line. Being aggressive is Luca Gavrin, 6'6", 22-year-old from Hamilton, Ontario, the 31st overall pick in the 2022 MLS Super Draft. Sends it on frame, and I don't think anybody touched it, so it'll be a goal kick for Toronto FC 2. the final whistle of the first half. Toronto FC 2 with a 1-0 lead. Orlando City B 0, TFC 2, 1. Over OCB here at Osceola Heritage Park in Kissimmee. Orlando City B returns home to Osceola Heritage Park. Friday. Plenty to come for you at the break from Kissimmee. Osceola Heritage Park, 1-0 Toronto FC 2 over OCB on the road. Toronto looking for its first win in 2023, while Orlando City B looks to stay unbeaten at home. Back with more after this.
sets, streaks ended, shootouts, a lot of them, and so much more. Alongside Samara Perez, I'm Michelle Montaigne with all of the highlights from a crazy week of play. Speaking of upsets, Crown Legacy FC delivered another one this weekend. This time over the defending MLS Next Pro Champs Columbus Crew 2. Striker Patrick Ajimong made the most of a first half break, scoring the game winner and his first of the season in the 23rd minute. With the win, the new kids on the block leapfrogged from third to first in the Eastern Conference standings and extended its winning streak to four. Back-to-back -back braces for Atlanta United 2's Nick Firmino resulted in back-to-back -back wins for the club. His two goals this week led ATL United 2 to a win over Chicago Fire FC 2, their second win in as many weeks, following a three-game winless streak to open the season. Firmino has five goals so far on the season, the most in the league, making him a very early Golden Boot favorite. Following closely behind is a five-way tie for second place with four goals apiece. Down in Houston, we saw a rematch of last year's Western Conference Final. Surprisingly, a similar storyline played out. Roberto Avila put Dynamo 2 ahead with a penalty, and Tacoma Defiance's first goal also came from the spot again. In the end, it was Wade Weber's squad who managed to steal the three points thanks to an epic 90th minute comeback goal from defender Gio Miglietti. The 2-1 win marked the Defiance's first win on the road this season. And across the league, MLS Next Pro saw a historic day, eight teams taking part in four shootouts. It's only the fourth time in the Young League's history that there have been four or more shootouts in a single match day. In the West, St. Louis City 2 ended Rapid 2's perfect run, winning the shootout 5-4, following a scoreless match. It was the first time this season Rapid 2 had been kept off the scoreboard during regulation. Galaxy 2 also managed a 5-4 advantage over Austin FC 2 in their shootout. Philadelphia Union 2 saw the same shootout total favor the home team after three different players scored for both Union 2 and TFC 2 in regulation. Rounding out the shootouts was maybe the most dramatic of them all. Orlando City B taking an 8-7 shootout win over New York City FC 2. Following a game that head coach of OCB, Marquine Carrollman, described as tough as a match. They are a good team. Uh, they have too much time playing together. They have a good uh, organized game, play. So there were, uh, there were moments in the first game, half, especially that I really like the team, the way that we play. Well, the way they've played has them still unbeaten at home. Match Day 5 had remarkable performances all across the league. You can catch all the highlights on MLSNextPro.com. Michelle and I will be back soon with more content, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Orlando. Last week we saw 41 goals. Our first half highlights and a recap of Friday's low match are coming up, but sticking with last week, we saw three players with a brace and some clutch match-winning goals into stoppage time. Melissa Montaigne tells us what else was best from match day five in this week's edition of the Spotlight. Following a historic weekend of MLS Next Pro, we're highlighting all the players that stood out following match day five. Getting us started is your MLS Next rising star of Match Day 5, and it's a guy who knows how to make an entrance. Inter-Miami CF2's Cesar Abadia Herrera, the Inter-Miami 2 Academy player affectionately called Chiche, scored just 20 seconds after being subbed onto the pitch. His impressive dribble around multiple Huntsville City FC defenders set up a solid strike right past the keeper to give his club the first lead of the second half, one they would not give up. He was one of two academy players to score for Inter-Miami CF2 en route to their first win in three weeks. 
The MLS Next Pro Player of Match Day 5 is a very deserving goalkeeper in the spotlight, Ryan Bilicek. The Timbers 2 keeper registered seven saves in the team's first clean sheet and their first win of the season. The performance also earned the 22-year-old his first professional victory. And the cherry on top of it all, his parents were there to see him in person for the first time in his professional career. As for the best goal of match day five, well, that goes to his Timbers 2 teammate, Selmir Miscic. He booted a laser past a wall of LAFC2 defenders off of a free kick in the 32nd minute and placed the ball perfectly in the bottom left corner, right beyond the reach of the keeper. The goal garnered almost 50% of the fan vote in the poll. Mistich's strike was one of two Portland posted on the day to help the squad earn their first win of the season. Rounding out the honors, the team of Match Day 5 is none other than Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. It's been a long time coming for this team, especially based on the way they've started out this season. Following their Match Day 5 performance, they are now the league leader in goals with 15 over 5 matches. And that's thanks in large part due to posting the largest goal differential of the day in a 5-2 win over Minnesota United FC2 at home that saw five different players find the back of the net. A big shout out to all of this week's Spotlight honorees. The competition keeps getting more and more intense. We're expecting that to continue when we bring you next week's honors. Thanks to Melissa back here in Osceola Heritage Park. It's 1-0 to Toronto FC2 in search of their first win of the season. It's halftime. Before we get to the first half highlights, let's take a look back at Friday night. And the Western Conference leaders were at home as Austin FC2 hosted Minnesota United FC2. After a three-hour delay for hail and thunderstorms, James Hadnot got us started in match day six. Just share with me how Birawanga attacks the match. Sixth straight match on the road in this 4 2 3 1. And at the top is Patrick Way. A false first kick. So we'll have to tango again. And let's dance here in Austin. Shake Toure. A little cute. Almost loses the ball. And now the ball is lost. Wea. And the shot is blocked by Damian Loss. Emmanuel Iwe was right there. Find their first. Now turning his way up, slips it to Pacheco, and Minnesota finds its first. A collision. Emmanuel Johnson ends up with it, takes the shot, and ties the match. Burton taking his time and slots it low and away. Leatherman has it blocked by Damian Loss and Austin takes the penalty shootout. Damian Loss with the stop. Let's take a look at match day seven, the schedule. Big one next week, Friday night, 7.30, Crown Legacy FC, OCB, top two teams as they stand right now in the Eastern Conference. They'll follow up Columbus Crew and Huntsville City FC on Friday night. And then at 10 o'clock on the West Coast, Real Monarchs Take on Tacoma Defiance, then of course a full slate on Saturday. Nine games on the Saturday slate. Starting off with NYCFC 2 and New England Revolution 2, and capped off in the nightcap by the Whitecaps FC 2 and Houston Dynamo 2 at 9 p.m. Eastern.
So let's take a look at our first half highlights from Osceola Heritage Park in Kissimmee. Toronto trying to end OCB's unbeaten streak at home and notch its first win of 2023 in the Howling win, as you can see. And here now, here's the only goal so far in the third minute. Great pass on the long ball from the keeper, Gavrin. And then Jesus Batiz made no mistake, beating Javier Otero off the far post and in. Now, OCB had plenty of chances to get it equalized, but just couldn't find the back of the net. Martin Perlman said he liked his first half last week, didn't like the second half. He's hoping for different results today. He hopes that he likes the second half a lot better than the first half here today. The only reason it's still 1-0 is because of saves like that from Javier Otero, the league leader in saves a season ago. Matiz was involved in a lot of the offensive pressure for Toronto FC2 in that first half. Like I said, OCB had their chances. This is among them probably the best one, Loyola, after the big save by Gavrin. Sent it about 20 feet over the bar, and he was frustrated. He knew he had a golden chance. One last big save from Otero. And that was full extension. And now we get a look at our first half stats. Possession favored OCB. Shots were 7-4 in favor of Toronto, including four on target. One yellow issue to OCB. They lead the league in that category. But other than that, a, a fairly even half after the first breakthrough by Jesus Batiz early in the game in the third minute. Teams will switch sides. We will go ahead here with half number two. Can OCB come back? All right, so ready with half number two. One nil, Toronto FC two leads OCB. No subs for either side at the half. Should be a great one here in the final 45. Jesus Batiz in the third minute, the only goal so far.
foul right away here to start the half. It'll go against OCB. Defender went down for Toronto. Now OCB has a chance. Into the middle, the shot, oh, and a save! Off his line. Gavron makes the second one, too. Oh, my goodness, what a couple of stops. This was brewing up perfectly. Tablante with a great pass into the middle of the box. And Loyola, for the second time, point blank is stoned. Tablante again. Can he be a catalyst for OCB in the second half? Into the shadows he goes. Loyola, another chance. Loyola, oh, and he can't put it home that time. And then finally, OCB cashes in. It's Freeman. Almost an identical play to the sequence right before. And OCB made no mistake that time. Alexander Freeman on the rebound, his third goal already this season. Ladies and gentlemen, your OCB goal scored by number 30, Alex Freeman in the 48th minute. OCB, you can tell they've come out in the second half with a different kind of jump than they did in the first half. Whatever Martin Perlman said to them has really gotten them going. again. Unbeaten at home, Toronto hasn't won period yet this season. Sent in, another big save by Gavrin, but this will be a corner for OCB. The pressure is on in the first five minutes of this second half. The 17 year old, well, soon to be 17 year old, turns 17 in a month, lines up to take the corner. Not much doing on that. Long ball back into the box for OCB. That's a foul going the other way, and Orlando can't believe it. Super 
Romancic had it taken away. That's too far out of the reach of Loyola. And it'll be a throw in for Toronto. forward at all so far in this second half. Tablante. Lost control for a moment. And Toronto takes over. now, back into the middle. Zimmermancic tried to pop one ahead. Freeman, the goal scorer, got it away. A lot of contact there, but play goes on. Solis winds up and missed the net. from Orlando Mbong, the 18-year-old with his second. And it's 2-1 Toronto. Take one more look. Another long ball springs this free. And just a terrible misplay by Kibben Gucci, who's normally so reliable. And Mbong scores the goal to put Toronto back in front. Ladies and gentlemen, TFC two goals scored by number 83, Hugo Umbao in the 54th minute. towards the middle. Orlando fight back when equalize again. Granado. 
Granados. Tablante. Corner coming for Orlando. Couple of just really poor defensive plays by OCB have led to both goals by Toronto. Back heel flip that went high and over the goal. Give and go, Faria. Too far out of his reach, though. And a throw in for OCB. Fifty eighth minute. Goals by Umbong, Batiz for Toronto. And the goal by Alexander Freeman for Orlando City B. Towards the middle, pressured by Oguin. Now Granados with some space. Granados to the outside, Tablante. Across over everybody. for Toronto. Toronto, one of four teams without a win in MLS Next Pro, LAFC 2, City FC 2, and HCFC. About to be an hour old. Loyola has had some great chances today. Solis. Far side. Away by Toronto, but kept alive. Freeman, the goal scorer. Loyola. Weaving. Loyola trying to squeeze through, but couldn't. Nicely done by Toronto, and it's cleared away. Race for it, and it's won by Kibin Gucci. This portion of the match is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. 61st minute, and substitution's about to come for Toronto. To 
Juan Barrow. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two substitutions for TFC 2 in the 61st minute. Leaving the game is number 72, Jordan Ferrier. He's replaced by number 86, Alec Diaz. Also leaving the game is number 73, Jesus Batiste. He's replaced by number 91, Daquan Barrow. So you can hear the substitutions. Batiste, the first goal scorer, comes out in favor of Daquan Barrow. And Alec Diaz replaces Faria. So a couple of switches up top for Johnny Cimini. Teams have scored in this half. Freeman for Orlando. And Bong for Toronto. 63rd minute. to TFC2 number 91, Daquan Barrow, in the 63rd minute. So Barrow comes in, picks up the yellow. It's one way to introduce yourself into this match. players in the lineup tonight for Toronto. Pinballing around. And now it's 2v2 the other way. Simmermancic to the far side, but it's a bad touch. Kept alive, though, by Toronto. Oguin. work and then a shove after that that's let go Pantaleo gives it back and gets it back Alec Diaz on as a sub lost possession gives it away to Medina well, that's dangerous and another yellow likely Taifi went down. That was a clear yellow. Ladies and gentlemen, the yellow card has been issued to TFC2 number 65, Anthony Keurig, in the 66th minute. Keurig picks up the yellow. An easy one to call.
Taguchi, hoping to make up for his earlier gaffe. That led to the go-ahead goal by Mbong. Solis gets it ahead, Granados. To Tablante. He goes down. And a throw-in coming for OCB. Into the middle for Abdi Salim. The wind is howling here tonight. But a beautiful night. Other than that, it all probably helps out with the heat and the humidity. Get the nice breeze for the full game. You can see from the flag, it is just gusting out there tonight. Corner here for Orlando. Looking to equalize once again. It was 1 0 at the break. Orlando came out strong and got on the board with a Freeman goal. And then a defensive blunder by OCB, their second. Led to the goal by Mbong. Here's the corner. Outswinger. Yeah, that's another corner. This portion of the match is brought to you by your Central Florida Audi dealers. Visit AudiOffers.com for exceptional offers. Another quarter, third in a row here for OCB. It's the third time the charm. OCB is apoplectic. There should be a handball there. Goals have both come on big mistakes by OCB's back line. They haven't really maneuvered their way into some great chances. But all that matters is that scoreboard to the 70th minute. 20 to go. Pantaleo. Spinning forward, Alec Diaz. Off the foot of Barrow. He gets it back, though. Zermancic. And a just missed. A third tally for Toronto. Set just wide. Ladies and gentlemen, substitution for OCB in the 70th minute. Leaving the game is number 59, Alejandro Granados. He's replaced by number 32, Wilfredo Rivera. Sub in. Fredo Rivera enters for Alejandro Granados. Rivera, a first team player in MLS. Tablante. You know, OCB wants to stay unbeaten at home. 2 0 and 1 so far. And that exciting penalty shootout win last week. But the Toronto, they haven't won yet. Would this be the night? Quarters sent away. And they 
do get the foul there. Assistant referee calls it. Very physical match on both sides. Lando looking to equalize. Feels like they've spent the majority of this half so far on this end. Another corner. Toronto wanted a foul. Yeah. Might have been a miss hit. Still a throw in for OCB. And now a substitution on its way. Solis. Deflected. Just over the bar. I feel like Orlando, given the chances they've had, takes us one point of brilliance and we'll have this game tied. Ladies and gentlemen, substitution for TFC 2 in the 74th minute. Leaving the game is number 83, Hugo Mbongo. He's replaced by number 82, Julian Altabelli. So you hear the substitution, Altabelli in for the second goal scorer, Mbong. Mbong has the go-ahead. Altabelli comes on in his place. Was anything intentional there? Just a little bit of a dust up to Juan Barrow, as you can see from his reaction. off his line. A great day, great game for Luca Gavran. Rebounding from his mistake last week. Brilliant saves. As has Javier Otero. Let's give him credit as well. This game could be already out of reach if not for some of the stops he made in the first half. So right now Toronto's playing with 10 men because Bumbong took his time getting off. Now Tabelli still hasn't been able to come out of the pitch yet. Now he does. You see him 82 in white. Here's a corner. OCB 
Good chance, but just headed over the net. Good, that's been a theme so far tonight. OCB has come very close quite a few times. It's unable to put it in the back of the net outside of the Freeman chance. Loyola's had three point blank chances. And hasn't been able to come up with a goal. This portion of the match is brought to you by Body Armor, more than a sports drink. Tabelli took a spill. Solis. Unforced error there by Orlando. Touched by Toronto and it's kept alive. Taifi. Trying to get it to Tablante, but couldn't. Kibaguchi. Rivera. Crowd getting restless here in Orlando. Solis. Flicked into the box. Loyola. Solis right on frame and the save made. Good build up there by Orlando, just couldn't beat Luca Gavrin. Just at the edge of the 18. Good attempt. Gavern had good positioning. <laughs> Tablante. As we enter the 81st minute. From Osceola, Heritage Park. Place where Orlando has not yet lost this season. Solis. for Rivera. Rivera the second half sub. Tablante again. Solis. Rivera. And it just squirts wide. Oh. How much closer can OCB get to the equalizer? It's a goal kick.
collision there. Two players down. We'll see what the call is. No cards issued there. Again, a very physical match here in Orlando. Turnover. Here comes OCB on the move, looking for the equalizer, and it's deflected and a corner is coming. You can feel the desperation start to come on for OCB. The in swinging corner. Is this the is this the one? And it is! Into the back of the net, off the corner. It's Abdi Salim. Gavron missed the punch, and it went right to Salim. See the missed punch and the header from Salim unmarked. And OCB has knotted it up at two in the 84th minute. Ladies and gentlemen, your OCB goal scored by So if we remain tied, we go right to a penalty shootout. And we know OCB won theirs last week, 8-7. Substitution for TFC2, also occurring in the 84th minute. Leaving the game is number 75, Luca Achitola. He's replaced by number 98, Jovan Ivanisevic. Ivanisevic in for Toronto. OCB. Not certain they want to go to penalty a shootout. Might want to just win this now, although that error pass won't help things. Pantaleo out. The Salim with the equalizer. Ivanisevic comes in for Toronto. Solis into the corner, double team there. CB right back on it. Rivera weaving through everybody. And a corner upcoming. OCB just scored on a corner on their last attempt. Another in-swinger. Here it comes. And this time, Gavard handles it.
88th minute. A high scoring second half. Toronto led 1 0 at the break. OCB tied it. Toronto took the lead again, and then just a few minutes ago, it was Salim, the first team player, off a corner who equalized it again. And now Toronto on the move, but that pass is a little bit too far. Throwing for OCB, they want to hurry. And that's another foul. It might just be a yellow. away by Gavrin. Beautiful job. Not out of danger yet, though. 89th minute. Down the stretch we go. Tablante into the box. Deflected away. Toronto calmly, at least for now, out of harm's way, but they turn it over. Solis tried to squeeze it through and couldn't. Throw in for OCB. Barrow couldn't get to it. Uh-oh, here's a turnover. Counter coming for Toronto. TFC 2 deflected high. Great recovery by Salim. Salim tied the game, and he has a beautiful recovery there to thwart what could have been a last second go-ahead goal. The official has indicated that there will be a minimum of two minutes of added time. Just a beautiful play. Just heard that there will be two minutes of stoppage. Cleared away by OCB for now. And now Rivera has it. On the move, OCB. Rivera puts on the brakes, lost it, and it's taken back over by Toronto. Nothing there. Player just went down. And now a goal kick for OCB. They want to get it going right away. Toronto, jubilation for OCB, who's about 30 seconds away from remaining unbeaten at home. Unbelievable turn of events here in Osceola Heritage Park. Just waiting on the final whistle. 
And OCB will remain unbeaten at home. Toronto will remain winless. And there's the final whistle. Improbably, OCB wins it. Three goals in the second half, two in the final 10 minutes. And the winner from Moises Tablante, who was strong all game long. An easy choice for tonight's man of the match from Orlando City, it's Moises Tablante. He's our man of the match presented by Adidas. The game winning goal, as you see right here. Moises Tablante, the Adidas man of the match. That'll do it for us here from Osceola Heritage Park in Kissimmee. What a match between OCB and TFC2. TFC2 remains winless. OCB remains unbeaten on their home turf. For our entire crew, this is Josh Bell saying so long. We'll talk to you next time. This copyrighted broadcast of MLS Next may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.